Hello, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany and this is going to be my spoiler review for The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, which is book one in the Stormlight Archive. So I have really been dreading actually doing this review because I know that my opinion about this book and series is a little bit unpopular. And let's just start out by saying that I did give this book upon reread, once again, a five out of five stars because I think that this book truly deserves a five star rating. I think that it is very well crafted and is just such a quality book and series that I don't think it would be fair to give it less than five stars. However, for me personally, it's just not a favorite of mine. And the reason I'm still making this review and saying that, even though I'm telling you, like, I really don't want to say that because I can just already feel people being like, how could you not think it's a favorite? It's just not. It's not what appeals to me when I'm reading fantasy as far as a favorite goes. I do recognize the aspect that makes this such a phenomenal world and story, and I cannot discredit any of it. So I do stand by my rating the second time of reading The Way of Kings as a five star book, but it just, I don't feel passionate about this world or this series or these characters even a little bit. And usually when I go to do spoiler filled reviews like this, I'm usually like so full of fire and passion, whether it was good or bad. I usually have so much that just has like set me on fire about it. And I just don't feel that way about the series, even upon reread. So I hate to say it, because I just feel so abnormal, I guess, for not being somebody who loves this series. And I've tried to like make myself love it, but it's just not a favorite. <laughs> so hopefully there's someone out there watching this who feels similarly to me. Now, also in saying that, I fully enjoy my time reading these books. I have every intention of rereading the next two books. I'm already rereading Words of Radiance and really enjoying it right now. I'm rereading Oathbringer next month and I absolutely have plans to continue on, read book four as soon as it's released because I, I like these books a lot. I really enjoy them. They're just not a favorite to me that appeals to my tastes in books quite as much. For example, I like the authors like Brent Weeks and Joe Abercrombie and Jay Kristoff, their writing styles, their characters, the tone. It's just, that is what appeals to me as a reader and that's okay. There's different books for everybody and if everybody's favorite book and series was the same, like that'd be kind of boring. I didn't take any notes reading this the second time. I thought I was going to and then I didn't. So we're just here to wing it today. And I think that this might be a little less in depth than some of my other spoiler reviews that I do just because I don't feel as passionate about these characters. That's kind of how I'll break it up. I try to always avoid watching anyone's reviews before I film my own because I don't want my thoughts to be altered at all. I just want them to be completely my own. I'm just gonna break, break it up into a few characters. Like the very, very, very beginning, I always love, even the first time, I remember, I think it's, I haven't listened to the audiobooks, so forgive my pronunciation of all of these names because I really don't know. So it's Zeth, I think. His story is so intriguing to me from the very beginning. I always was so excited. Anytime we got a perspective from him, I just couldn't wait to hear what was going on. And that's one thing as reading along that you're trying to figure out who's controlling him and who wants him to kill all of these kings and why are they doing it and why does he have to listen to and follow the orders of whoever has this oath stone. So I've obviously read Words of Radiance and Oathbringer already, but I can't wait to get even more from his character's perspective because we didn't really get a whole lot in this book alone. But yeah, I, I remember when we changed from his perspective the first time that I read it, I was like, no, when is he coming back? And then it's not very frequently in the first book. I was always bummed by that. Now, another interesting thing is that I had forgotten so many of the events that happened in this book. I read all three of these books in 2018 and they were some of the first adult high fantasy that I read. So I didn't grasp a lot of what was going on. And I think that upon reread, it was so much more clear of all of the events that were taking place because I knew who was who. I was able to keep everyone straight because I had already read it. I knew who these characters 
were. Um, so that was very helpful, but then I was able to pick up on a ton of foreshadowing. And then, like I said, I, t I totally forget what happens in all three of these books. And as I would read, things would come back to me and I did remember some of the key twists at the end and things like that, but they were still just as good reading them the second time. I have to say that still. So then we'll talk about Shalon. I am somebody who really loves Shalon and her witty attitude, I suppose, because she is quite the feminist. I found some of her, and I think you pronounce it Yasna, who I love as well, but just this one quote that I tabbed that I loved is Yasna saying, you were simply showing persistence, a trait I normally encourage. Storms alight. I've often been guilty of stubbornness myself. Sometimes we find it hard, hardest to accept in others that which we cling to in ourselves. So I just find like so much of the two of their interactions super relatable, but Shalon is a girl after my own heart and she's strong-willed and she is stubborn, but she's witty and she's not gonna take anybody's crap and I just love her for that. So I really, really loved any time we got to read from her perspective. And at first, I remember the first time I read this through as well. And then reading it the second time, I felt similarly that I was really annoyed with her because I wanted to like her. But you you like Yasna so much in the beginning that it's kind of hard when you know she has this plot to wrong her and steal from her for her, even if it's for her family, because Yasna is putting her trust in her, which she doesn't usually do, and she's gonna go stab her in the back. So I did find it hard to totally like her at some points because she was doing something that was bad. But then I, I like, you know, when things come full circle and she has to admit what she's done and she owns up to it and she confesses everything. And I just like that we get that pureness within the relationship after that, that everything is put out in the open and they can have like a pure fresh start where they can work together again. So I found that contrary to what I've heard most people say, even in the Discord and stuff, Shalon and Yasna, they were some of my favorite chapters to look forward to. I think my second favorite and I think my third favorite is going to disappoint people. I don't know. So I just loved all of their interactions. Obviously knowing what happens, I can't really say too much, but I do look forward to rereading in the next couple books more of what unfolds for them and what comes about within their relationship and within all of the knowledge that she's gaining through all of the texts that she's reading and such. Yeah, I really love her perspective. Then we'll talk about my favorite perspective, my favorite character in this series, and that is Dalinar. I love him from the very beginning till the end in the next book. I just love him and I find his storyline the most interesting to me because when we are following Dalinar and we have all of his visions during the storms and such, we just get glimpses of what tasks that he is supposed to accomplish and the path that he is going on. And I like how it slowly unfolds for us until the end when we find out what he's really supposed to be doing and he decides that he's going to take it upon himself to do this even though it's going to be hard he's going to be honorable and go against the grain of what would be easy to try to make this happen because he knows that it is right i feel for him so much because he feels like he's going crazy people make him think he's crazy and no one believes him. And I obviously had already read it, so I know the outcome, but I just felt so bad for him. And I so badly wanted others to start believing him and trusting him, which obviously they do by the end of the book. Also, some of my favorite scenes with him were obviously in the end, several chapters when Kaladin went to save him and everything unfolded and he gave up his shard blade to save Kaladin and Bridge Four. Like those are some of my favorite moments from the entire book, the things that really interested me. And because it just grips you emotionally and makes you so much more attached to him because of the sacrifices that he was willing to make to do what's noble and to do what's right and to just be such an honorable guy. He's just not like a, an angry leader or somebody who wants to win at all costs. He just wants to do the right thing and I appreciate that in him so much. 
So I always love reading from Delano's perspective. He is definitely my favorite. Then we have Kaladin, the other perspective. And I know, I, I don't, I, I feel like when I say this, like I say, I don't know what's wrong with me because Cal is everyone's favorite, but Kaladin's chapters and perspectives were the most boring and my least favorite to read from this entire book. And I, I do really enjoy Kaladin's character. I like where we see him starting and you're just led to believe that he's such a strong person and can't be beaten. But then we slowly, his backstory gets told to us about all the hardships that he's been through and why he's so down on himself and why he blames himself for so many things and doesn't believe in himself whatsoever anymore. But we see everyone else believing in him from the beginning. So I obviously feel for Kaladin so very much. I loved the way that Sanderson dealt with guilt and grief and depression and trauma that he's went through. I think it was very realistic that somebody would be feeling this way after having been through all of what Kaladin went through. So I definitely appreciated seeing that side of things and seeing him try to believe in himself again and try to get this group of people to make a difference and make a change with him. Like I tapped this quote and it says, where Syl is asking, what am I? And he's saying, it doesn't matter, does it? And she says, shouldn't it? He says, I don't know what I am either. A bridgeman, a surgeon, a soldier, a slave. Those are all just labels. Inside, I'm me. A very different me than I was a year ago, but I can't worry about that. So I just keep moving and hope my feet take me where I need to go. And I feel like that just kind of encompasses where he's at because he is somebody who always chooses to do the right thing. And that's just such an admirable character trait to see in such a brutal world, especially for somebody who's had such a hard past that he has. He just keeps putting one foot in front of the other and keeps chugging along because he knows he can't give up. Even when he wants to take his own life and be done with it, he knows that he still has a purpose and needs to carry on. And I love that about him. I love how he takes this group of people that are at the, they're slaves, they're at the lowest of lows and they, don't want to open up to anybody. They don't want to share their past experiences. And he takes them and forms this family with them. And he has a group of friends that stand with him and stand behind him and will follow him and support him in any decision he makes, follow him into any battle he chooses to go in. They're just there for him 100%. I loved seeing him create Bridge for as this family, basically. And contrary to what a lot of people think as well, I'm not attached to any of the Bridgemen. Like, I, I don't know why I don't care about any of them, any of the side characters. I think that they add to the novel. I think it's perfect that they're there and I think it's important that they're there to show us that found family aspect, but I feel absolutely no emotional attachment whatsoever to any of the Bridgemen besides Kaladin. So that's, just an unpopular opinion, I suppose. I'm not sure. I like that we still are able to see by the end that Kaladin is so jaded by his past with the light eyes that he has a very strong prejudice towards them still because it wasn't like a quick resolution to his hatred for so long because he's been wronged so many times by all of the light eyes. I think it would have felt insincere if all of a sudden he just totally trusted Dalinar even with everything going on, even with him freeing him basically, I think that it would have been insincere. So I'm really glad that we are able to still see his hesitation there. But I think the reason he's not a favorite of mine is because I tend to really love the morally gray characters in books. They are my favorites. Like 10 out of 10 times, my heart will go out to somebody like Glockta rather than Kaladin. Like Glockta would be a favorite. And I'm not too sure what that says about me, but frankly, I'm okay with that. That's just what interests me more. So uh, that's why he's just not my favorite. He's so pure and good hearted. So I totally appreciate him in the story and his role that he plays. I think I'm just trying, I'm like being like super defensive because everyone loves Cal. Everyone is obsessed with this book series.
it's excellent. I just don't have the same feelings as everyone, I suppose. So that sums up quickly just some brief thoughts about our main characters. As far as the world building goes in this book, I mean, Sanderson did it again. He always does it, right? It's phenomenal. It's brilliant. It's very unique. It's very vividly described. There were a couple mixed feelings I had rereading The Way of Kings. One, it felt a little more boring on the second time because I already knew everything about the world building it was pretty clear in my head for the most part. So it wasn't like reading it for the first time where you're just like, wow, this is amazing. But if I can think back to my first time reading it, I just was amazed by how well I could picture everything going on. And I was able to picture a little bit clearer, for example, like the Parashendi, which was helpful. It's just, it goes along with picking up on more things if you've read something more, more times. But I mean, in my opinion, that is where Brandon Sanderson really excels. That is where he surpasses so many other authors in this world and in this unique magic. I particularly like the storm magic and all of the spren like I don't know who couldn't like the spren in this book the whole idea of it is just so brilliant but something that is really unique but very like it's almost like a whimsical sort of magical element rather than just this like harsh brutal world and speaking of spren I love seeing Syl with Kaladin there are Syl is one of my favorite characters actually just seeing her interactions she makes me laugh so much but I love her perception of human beings and the way that she thinks about the world and that is another thing that I have to say that Brandon Sanderson does so well in this book is he relates so much about humans and life to the real world I tabbed so many quotes that just have to do you know they're talking about something in this fantasy world but it hits home and is completely relevant to our world and humans and the way that we think and the way that we act and usually it's bad things that you know he's picking up on or pointing out about the human race and how we could be doing better so i appreciate when Syl brings those things up i love her character for that but i just think brandon sanderson finds really unique ways to include those things without making it blatantly overly obvious and without having it take you out of the story i think that they are meant to be purposeful because um, i'm sure he's a very intelligent man who is trying to create these links to our world as well. I mean, who knows, but that's just how I feel. I feel like they are there for a purpose. And I love that about this book. There was a ton that stood out to me as far as comments that could be directly to, related to society these days. So as far as the magic system goes, I mean, it's far from fully explained in book one here, but you get just enough to not be too overwhelmed and you just have to be okay with knowing you don't know all of it so far. And that is, a he, he makes you feel very secure in the fact that you're going to learn more, but at the time being, you don't have to know more to understand what's going on, but it's only going to open your eyes wider and you're gonna have a clearer vision of things later on. So I think that he describes everything in a really great way to where it never feels like info dumping to me. I just think that he is stellar in those aspects of the magic system and the world building. He's one of the best of the best with that. And it really shows in this book where he took such a long time to establish this world in this thousand page novel where we're just getting a small glimpse really of this world and what is going to happen and what has happened. I think it was brilliantly done. And then the other thing is the plot was just, it. you feel so much of this book, you feel like you're not really reading a plot. And even in the Discord, I know several of you were like, okay, what's going on, what's happening? Cause I feel like nothing's happening. And I'm like, I feel you, nothing's happening. Obviously it all comes together at the end and it was all there for a purpose. And I see why it was necessary for him to take the time he did to establish each character in their part of the world where they are. I think it added a lot to the character development, but also just the setting and the feel of the world because if all of that was not established ahead of time the ending wouldn't have had such an impact so while i do think that it was maybe a little boring through some parts in the middle i feel that it was necessary for us to go through all of that learning in order to get to the end point 
So I love the way that Brandon Sanderson ends his books. You can almost always count on a phenomenal ending from Brandon Sanderson that's always going to blow your mind and that's even shocking to you reading the second time. I can truly say that, that I was like, wow, the second time reading the book, which that's a great feeling because you already know it's going to happen. You've already read it before and if it can still shock you and wow you, then that's just truly an excellent book in my opinion. I know this was probably very rambly, but I feel like I touched on the magic, the world building, the plot, and the characters. So we're gonna cap it at that. I can tell you I'm about 100 or so pages into Words of Radiance right now and I'm already super engaged in the world again to where it's all I want to read. I don't want to pick up any of my other books that I need to be reading right now because I'm so invested in this world, particularly Dalinar and Yasna and Shalon are who I care about right now. We'll see. I'm, I'm curious to see if any of my feelings that I'm talking about in this video will be changed at all by the end of book two, by the time I do my spoiler review for that. So hopefully there's some of you guys out there on the same page as me. Hopefully you're picking up what I'm putting down that it's an excellent book worthy and deserving of all of the praise that it's given and all of the hype around the series, but it's just lacking that special something that appeals to me as a reader. Please let me know if any of you guys relate. Um, if you can't, let me know too, because that's totally valid, totally fair, and I, I completely understand you. But yeah, let me know your favorite things about The Way of Kings. If you participated in the Discord, leave me a comment. Tell me if you're reading Words of Radiance right now as well. I would love to hear all of your guys' thoughts about it. And thank you guys for watching. I will see you next time.